Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at two new Raspberry Pi 4 cases from a company called Acasa. The first one being their Pi 4 Pro, and the second one being one that I'm actually really interested in, the Gym Pro. Both of these cases are made out of aluminum, so they passively cool your Raspberry Pi, and there's no fan needed. At least, that's what they state, and we're going to be doing some testing here. I'm going to do a quick assembly on both of these, but the first one we're going to be taking a look at is the Pi 4 Pro. This has more of an industrial look than the Gym Pro, and hopefully we can get some really good thermal performance out of this, because I am a big fan of passively cooled cases. If you're a regular viewer of my channel, you know I've tested a bunch of them out. So inside of the box, you're going to get the instruction manual. We'll also get the top plate here. And this is pretty hefty. This is the aluminum top half of the case. And as you can see, this is the black version of the case. And one thing I really like about both of these cases is they are full aluminum. So the top half and the bottom section is aluminum. On a lot of these newer passively cooled cases, there is a plastic bottom. But here we have a full metal construction. Now one thing that was a bit odd when I first started doing some research on this case was the way it passively cools your Raspberry Pi. They include two little aluminum blocks here that'll go on top of your Raspberry Pi and it'll kind of sandwich between the Pi and the top of the case. And usually with these passively cooled cases for the Raspberry Pi, this is built into the case, so I'm not exactly sure why they chose to do this. Possibly it was easier to manufacture like this, or they did some testing and it does cool better, but we're going to find that out by the end here. We also get our thermal pads, some thermal paste, and all the hardware we need to mount the Pi inside. So this does come with instructions, and it's pretty easy to do, but there are more steps than most of the other cases that I've tested because we have those aluminum blocks that go between the Pi and the top half of the shell. And speaking of these aluminum blocks, we do have some thermal pads that need to go on here. I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera because peeling these off does take a little while. So I've got both of the midsection aluminum blocks set up with the thermal pads on them, and this L-shaped one actually makes contact with the CPU and the USB Type-C power circuit, and that does create a lot of heat. This is something I actually haven't seen out of another aluminum case, so hopefully this does some really nice cooling for the Pi 4. And we have this smaller block here, which actually doesn't go on the RAM chip. You'll see me put it on here, but I went back and switched it out. This actually goes on top of the USB 3.0 controller, which does produce a lot of heat. And these blocks sit up just far enough to make contact with the top half of the shell, and that's why they include some thermal paste. The user manual says put one little dot on the USB controller chip block and three little dots on the CPU block. And once we have that done, we're going to put the top half of the case on with the four extra screws. And what this is going to do is sandwich those aluminum blocks that we placed on top of the Raspberry Pi between the Pi and the top half of the case. It'll allow heat to be transferred to the top half of the case, and in turn, the entire case itself. And once we have that done, it's a very industrial look. I personally like it. We do have access to all of the ports on the Raspberry Pi. There is a cutout on the side in case you want to run a ribbon cable to the GPIO, but for everything else, USB, micro HDMI, power, and micro SD card, we can access it no issues whatsoever. So with the Pi 4 Pro version finished, let's move over to the Gym Pro version. Now right off the bat, I can tell you right now that the box actually feels heavier than the other one, so we might have more aluminum here to work with, and this might actually cool better. Again, we get our user manual, and here's the Gym Pro. I think this thing looks absolutely amazing. This is cast aluminum, and we have this nice little design here. The top is pretty thick, and like I mentioned, all in all, this case does feel beefier than the other one. I'm pretty sure we do have more aluminum to work with with the Gym Pro. The bottom cover is also aluminum, and this will assemble a little differently. We have to pull this bottom plate off. But once we get inside of here, we have all of our accessories. This also uses the aluminum block method like we saw with the previous case. But inside of the case itself, there are some cutouts or slots for those aluminum blocks to sit. So they'll sit in here pretty securely. So we have the L-shaped block that'll sit on the CPU, and we also have the smaller block that sits on the USB controller, not the RAM chip. So yeah, I really like this Gem Pro case. It feels like it might be powder coated, but I really don't think it is. I think it's just the straight aluminum right out of the cast. So just to save some time, I went ahead and assembled the aluminum blocks here. I do have thermal paste that's touching the top half of the case, and I have my thermal pads on the other side. And basically, once you have this done, all you need to do is kind of angle the Raspberry Pi inside of it. By the way, I'm using 8 gigabyte Raspberry Pis with both of these. I'm going to be using the same SD card. Just make sure everything's lined up. 
and it sits in here really nicely so it should line up perfectly once we put the four screws in. And there we have it. We now have the Raspberry Pi inside of the case. It's time to put the bottom plate on here. Only fits one way and it does have recessed screws so nothing is going to scratch your desk up. It does look like the SD card does sit in here a little further back, but I think I could still get it without any tweezers. So yeah, there it is. I really love the look of the Gym Pro. It definitely has some beef over the uh, Pi 4 Pro case, but both of them are nice cases. I mean, overall, they're all aluminum. They're really sturdy, but we really need to get down to see how these perform. So what I'm going to be doing is running some stress tests on both of these at the stock clocks and overclock. Like I mentioned, these are going to be using the same SD card and they're both 8GB Raspberry Pi 4s. So I'm going to be running Stressberry on both of these cases. Now the first test I'm going to be running is 1.5GHz on both of these cases. Then I'm going to overclock to 2.1GHz on the CPU and 700MHz on the GPU. Basically, Stressberry is just going to give me the idle temperature, it's going to idle for a little while, then max out all four CPU cores for 10 minutes, and then give me a cooldown period. Between each one of these tests, I'm going to give it a cooldown period of around 10 minutes for each one of these cases, and then I can create a chart by the time I'm finished so we can see which case comes out on top. Okay, so I'm finished with all four tests here. It did take me a little while, but my room temperature is 74 degrees Fahrenheit or 23.3 degrees Celsius. In the red here, we have the Pi 4 Pro case at 2.1 GHz on the CPU and 700 MHz on the GPU. We reached a maximum of 53 degrees Celsius. This is really good. We did not hit thermal throttle and the case definitely passed the test. Next up, we have the Pi 4 Pro at 1.5 GHz with a maximum of 43. This is just the stock clocks here. So overall, the Pi 4 Pro case, either at the stock clocks or overclocked, will definitely keep your Pi cool and keep it from thermal throttling when it reaches that limit. Moving over to the Gym Pro case at 2.1 GHz on the CPU and 700 MHz on the GPU, we reached a maximum of only 47 degrees Celsius. This is actually the best performing passively cooled case that I've ever tested on my channel. And now that I have this in my database, I will be coming out with a video in the next few days just giving you my thoughts on all of the passively cooled cases that I've tested and we'll come up with some more charts here. But this is definitely the best one that I've tested. Keep in mind, it's passively cooled. There are no fans in this case. And another great thing about this case is the cooling time. So if we take a look here, right after that 10 minutes at 2.1 gigahertz, it immediately went right down to around 38, 37 degrees Celsius here. So cooling time is really good here. Take a look at that Pi 4 Pro at 2.1. It dropped off and it started cooling down, but not as fast as the Gym Pro. Really impressed here with this cast case. I didn't expect it to do this good. So going into this, I really had my doubts about these cases because of the internal aluminum block system that Acas is using, but it looks like they really did their research here because these are awesome performers. And like I mentioned, the Gym Pro is the best performing passively cooled case that I've tested for the Raspberry Pi, be it at the stock clocks or even overclocked to 2.1 GHz on the CPU and 700 MHz on the GPU. I was actually blown away by the thermal performance here. And in my opinion, this is actually a really good looking case. But if you're into that industrial design, I think the Pi 4 Pro will be more than enough for your Raspberry Pi 4, even overclocked. As you saw with the charts here, it still did a really great job at cooling. So yeah, definitely keep an eye on the channel because I will be doing a roundup video on all of the passively cooled cases that I've tested on my channel. I think there's about eight right now for the Raspberry Pi 4, so I'll have a big showdown. But that's it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more or even picking one of these up, I will leave some links in the description. But like always, thanks for watching.